CTO and founder. Uh, and we're going to talk about DynamoDB capacity. So three different things. Right sizing, so how much should you provision? How much, uh, how much are you consuming? Uh, and there's even more complications there. The second is reserved usage. How much reserved usage should you use? And then how do I actually allocate and understand my spend? Uh, there's lots of, lots of little gotchas, and so all the data is there in Amazon. Amazon has all the data, it's just in different places. You gotta pull it together to make intelligent business decisions on this. So right sizing. So um, the most important thing that you need to look at when you right size DynamoDB. Well, let's consider, first of all, there's two things you have to do. One is you have to choose your provision capacity. And, and provision, you have to do that for both read and write. So there's really two numbers you have to come up with. Now, how you actually monitor that and make decisions is really based on um, CloudWatch metrics. So out of the box, all these metrics are generated. So if you're using CloudWatch, you have this data, right? So you just now need to go use it. And so um, the top line is the ones you want to look at first, which is consumed. You want to know as you're using the ta as you're using DynamoDB, how much you actually consuming. So you get a, uh, a metric that says consumed read, consumed write, and now out of that data, you want to look at two things: average and max because they're both important, right? Your average is, what does it look like for a five minute period, an hour, whatever it is. Your max is, how high did I spike? Because you can't just use the max. Um, Amazon does have some um, throttle, uh, some bursting capabilities. Um, it's not exactly documented. They give you some details. So they make your life a little bit easier by allowing you to burst, but you can't write or expect it. Uh, you can't expect that bursting is gonna save you. So you do have to pick uh, uh, the right provision capacity. So if you're consuming five units, um, you, you, don't want to con you, you don't want to provision five because if you ever spike, you're going to get hit. If you, if you know your app is very stable, then maybe you don't have to. If you know your usage is very stable, maybe you can pick five. I mean, your goal is to keep, uh, to, to provision, to pick as little as you can and stay in line with that consumed. Uh, if you can auto scale it, there are different ways to auto scale uh, your, your capacity, which is basically as your consume changes, can you auto scaling your provision with it as well? So con consumed is how much you're actually using. Provision is basically you say, this is my, uh, this is my table and I want it to have uh, this much throughput that I, that I support for it. You're paying based on provisioned. You don't pay on consume, you, ban, you pay on provision. So if you consume zero, but you provision 100,000, you're gonna pay for 100,000. So the goal is to keep those as close together as possible. Um, so you can measure the consumed. You can also, CloudWatch pushes out the provisioned read and write capacity as well. So it makes it very manageable. So you can look at those two CloudWatch metrics next to each other and actually see how far off you are. The other CloudWatch metrics is throttled requests. And there's actually a couple more we'll show you in a different slide, because it's not just throttle request, it's read and write th throttle request. But, but basically, throttle, throttle request is anytime you're calling and you're getting uh, an error because you're you, you've, you've could, trying to consume more than you provisioned, you're gonna get a throttle request error. So you can actually go into CloudWatch as well and look at that. Um, again, they'll allow you to burst a little bit, so this is very much an art, not a science, around um, how much do I provision um, to match my right consumed amount. So the idea, again, is provision only as much as you consume and keep that throttle request as close to zero as possible. The other thing to understand, CloudWatch retains up to 14 days of metrics. So, you know, if you really want to look at a longer term, you have to be prepared for that. So here is actually CloudChecker showing you these metrics. So you can actually go ahead and pick DynamoDB consumed read capacities over a much longer period of time. So this is when we, when we started that table uh, or this started this DynamoDB and it just looks and you can see this is your max. So you have both average and max. So you can see this is how you spike. Each one of those is your spikes. So you have the ability to do a start and end date, actually look at that, and so you can pull your consumed, you can pull your uh, average, max, your provision, and then compare all those so that you have something you can actually make a choice on that. So here's another where you can see your average read provisioned is one thing, your average consumed is less than that, and then the max is, is, is that. So you really, um, and I'm gonna say this, and then I'm gonna change my mind a minute later, but usually you don't really wanna provision more than your max. The idea is your max should be enough so that you, if you ever, you're never gonna spike above that, so it should be enough. So you really, if you see the max line, 
you shouldn't be provisioning above that. You also want to monitor DynamoDB for errors. So the things you want to monitor, obviously system errors and user errors. Those are um, what the user can get as he's using it. So every every system, a system error is basically on the on the system side. The user error is um, doing something wrong there. Now read throttle events, write throttle events, and throttle requests. So there's some real intricacies over whether you're there's not quite a one-to-one -one correlation, so don't get confused about that. Um, and the dimensions, you can read those events over different things like the table, the operation. So you could really dig in and, and really see where my throttle requests are happening. So we have a bunch of best practice checks that help you with all that. So we actually will look at your environment and highlight for you where you have idle and unused stuff, where you're getting system errors, where you're getting throttle requests, user errors, all of that. So Cloud Checker will actually help you keep track of all this and actually push that to you. Right sizing warnings. So here's the warnings, which is that uh, you want to keep your, even if you're consumed is less than if you're provisioned, you still may get throttled. So, you know, does that make sense? It shouldn't make sense uh, because you provision more than you consume. Um, the SDKs have built-in retry logic as well. So if you're using the SDK and you're getting throttled, uh, you may not even know about it because it may get throttled, wait X seconds and try again. But understanding why, why would you get throttled based on that? And it's because of partitions. And uh, um, in, in Matthew's uh, presentation, he talked about partition keys. That's all what it's about, is that you have to make sure your partitions are well designed um, and you're, you're distributing your keys correctly. And it really is hot keys are the main problem here. Um, behind the scenes in DynamoDB, they have multiple partitions. Um, and it's based on two things. One is the size of the partition, and the other is how much provision capacity you've actually set up. But to understand, a partition can be up to 10 terabytes. So if your table's more than 10 terabytes, you're gonna put it on multiple partitions. The other thing is uh, the maximum that you can put on a partition, the maximum a partition can do is 3,000 reads and 1,000 writes per second. So if you partition 10,000 reads and 2,000 writes, uh, and it's all on one partition, all your data is on one partition, you can't recognize that. You still can only get 3,000 out of that. Now, DynamoDB tries to, when you go above the 3,000, what it does is splits you into two partitions. So even if you don't hit the 10 terabytes, you get split into two partitions. And so if your keys are distributed properly and you're doing those 5,000 reads evenly across the two partitions, then you could recognize 5,000. But if all the keys you're hitting in a second are on the same partition, you still can't exceed the 3,000. So it's all about one of the most important things when you're trying to optimize your DynamoDB usage is to think about partition key strategies, to think about how you're setting up your partition keys and then how you're accessing reading or writing data. So that's really a very important thing to do. And I'm not gonna go too deep into that, but there's some really interesting blog posts about how to set up your partition keys in a way, how to read it in a certain order, do things like that. So the other thing is then purchasing your reserve capacity. So once you figure it out, so the, the one thing to understand, right sizing comes first. So don't buy your reserve capacity first and then go back and right size it because you're gonna figure out you bought too much, you didn't buy enough, whatever. So get your right sizing first, then figure out what do I need to do reserve. Reserve usage can be up to, on DynamoDB, can be about 75% if you're willing to commit for three years. So it can be a huge amount. Again, the other thing that I've seen is with DynamoDB, your storage is pretty cheap actually. I mean, I think. I think the latest one is about 25 cents a gigabyte. So storage is very rarely what your expensive part of DynamoDB is. It's typically your, your provision capacity that, that really is your big cost. So that's where you really need to focus on optimizing it. So um, on-demand versus reserved. So um, Amazon has a lot of different models for reserved usage. So EC2 has their model, RDS, um, Redshift. All of those are fairly similar. DynamoDB is a pretty different model. It's still that I'm committing. I'm, um, I'm basically purchasing X number of reserved capacity units. I have to pick whether it's read or write, or I can do both, obviously, uh, but, I, uh, but each one gets used. Uh, but you don't have to do other things like with EC2. You have to pick availability zone, instance type, um, operating system, all that. With DynamoDB, it's pretty simple. It's just read and write. And then that, that, uh, that capacity, reserve capacity you use, can be used against any table. So it's also not like you're buying reserve capacity for a specific table. 
So it's actually a pretty simple model. It's probably the simplest model around reserve usage. So uh, you, again, you could pick one or three years. You have to pick read or write, and you have to pick which region applies to. So those are, those are the three factors. Um, don't commit to a specific table. Uh, so how do you actually calculate how much on-demand you're using? Basically provisioned minus reserved. So whatever you provisioned. And if you're auto-scaling, that question becomes a lot harder than just have I selected one provisioning level and if I leave that on all the time. If I leave that on all the time, then it's very easy to figure out how much I should buy for reserve capacity is basically provision minus what I have reserved today. And here's a case of where, again, you see this is auto-scaling a little bit, but you just take your average read units provisioned, your reserved uh, units consumed, and what's left is what you're running today is on demand. So again, this is just Cloud Checker showing you exactly that, showing you over a time period, you know, what, what would be the best uh, amount of reserve capacity to buy. Again, this is just a report that'll give you exactly, you know, this is what your possible monthly saving is if you bought this amount of reserved. This is what you had existing, that's what they recommend. Total upfront, months to break even, total savings over a year, less the upfront, return on investment. So we just give you a lot of stats to map all that out, make it real easy to right size, make it real easy to make those purchase recommendations around DynamoDB. The last piece is actually understand what you're spending with DynamoDB. And it's an interesting challenge with DynamoDB. The place to go look at your, your uh, spend is in the detailed billing report. So that's a big file that Amazon dumps into an S3 bucket that basically every hour, every charge you get, it dumps in there. And that could be a huge file. I see people with 50, 100 million rows in their DVR. Uh, for the month. The one challenge though is that when they write data in there, they, for res there's a resource ID in there. So if you're running EC2, you get your instance ID in there. If you're running S3, you get your S3 bucket name in there. So you have real fine grained details so you can understand exactly which resource is associated with it, which cost. Today, DynamoDB doesn't write that resource ID in there today. Uh, so you just see how much your total usage is, which makes it a little bit harder to start understanding, well, my usage is all coming from these five tables, so these are the ones I want to focus on, on, uh, on really optimizing my usage. So, because um, that's important, really, is you have a $20,000 DynamoDB bill, you know, what do you do? If you just start randomly picking tables and trying to optimize them one at a time, that's a bad idea, because you don't know, you know, how much, how much cost each one is, so you really want to, figure out which are the most expensive, focus on those, because that's where you're gonna get the most savings by optimizing. So again, we give you a report that shows kind of your total cost by table. How do we do that? We cross-reference your CloudWatch metrics. So again, Amazon has the data in it. So it has CloudWatch, which tell you exactly what you provisioned each hour of each month. And it has the, the details, uh, detailed billing report, which shows exactly what the cost is. You just have to compare the two and you can come up and start allocating costs to um, to a specific table.